Now that our application is starting to get a little bit more complicated, we've got friendly ID and carrier way for file uploading and an association to users. And our users have all of the device fields, which I'm not really sure what they all are. Uh, you can start to notice that very quickly your application starts to become complicated. And this is only going to get worse as your application grows. So there's a gem that we're going to talk about called Annotate. And Annotate will go through your models, fixtures, tests, and so on and write a comment in there at the top of your uh, model, for example, like this one, it will write a comment in there telling you what the database table looks like. So you can tell what column type it is, what the name of the thing is, as well as um, any restrictions on the uh, column. So you can see that the uh, ID column can never be null, and it's also the primary key for this table. So this gem, while it's not necessarily a feature for um, your customer or the end user on your application, it is incredibly valuable for you to have this at a moment's glance inside your code so that you can work much quicker. So this is what we're going to install today. This gem is also extremely popular as it has almost a million downloads. So we'll grab that line from the gem file and we actually want to install it inside of the development group just like we did with better errors because uh, this is a gem that doesn't really need to be available in production so we're just going to leave it in the development group and install it there. So using the annotate gem is really simple when you're inside your Rails application all you have to do is type annotate and this will go through and run the gem against all of the models and tests and other things inside your application that it can find. And it will tell you how many uh, that it reconfigured. So we can now open up our book model inside of our application and see that we have all these comments at the beginning. So we have uh, an ID column, a name, a description, created that, updated that, and so on. And this is immediately available to us as we're working. And uh, it makes it for a significantly um, quicker development time for everything that you're doing, just because you can go reference it without having to dive into anything other than the text editor that you're probably already in. And our user, uh, our user model has been annotated as well. And you can see that these are all the uh, fields that um, devise provides us. So we have a count of how many times the user signed in, which is interesting. Uh, it's automatically shipped with devise and we may or may not have known that, which is really cool. So we know exactly what we're looking at here. Now the other feature that annotate provides is annotate dash dash routes. And if you run this command, it goes through and runs essentially rake routes and then it stores the output inside a comment in your routes file. And if we open up our routes file again, um, you can see that all of the output from rake routes in your terminal is pretty much dumped right here. So this is incredibly useful if you're not terribly familiar with your routes. As you get extremely familiar with you know, the syntax for these things, you'll have no problem and not really need this. So I think that's the reason why dash dash routes is not done by default because it's sort of just duplicating what you already see here. Lastly, annotate provides a Rails integration. So you can Rails generate annotate install and this will install a configuration file into uh, your application. Now this is a rake file and it's a little bit different than a config initializers file. So the config initializers just get run every single time you run the Rails server. On a rake task, however, when you run rake db migrate, for example, that is what is happening with that. So let's open up annotate models.rake and take a look at it. So inside this rake file, you can see that the first thing that happens is that this only runs in development mode, which is important because we don't really need this in production. 
and it adds a task here, uh, which is all of this code, that basically sets the defaults for how annotate operates. And then lastly, it calls annotate load, cat, load task, which basically tells Rake to automatically hook this in as soon as someone runs one of the Rake commands that annotate has chosen to integrate with. And uh, the ones that it has chosen to integrate with are essentially just the rake db migrate ones. So what happens is, now if you were to go into your um, application and run a new migration, let's, um, let's generate a migration to add name to users. And we'll give them a name uh, attribute. And when we run this now, since we've installed this rake task, it is automatically found and loaded and when we run the migrations uh, nothing changes here however when we run rake db migrate you'll notice that not only does it add the column but it also annotates the model again as well which is really nifty because now this is automatically updated every single time that you run a migration i know this is something that i've done manually for a long time where I'll run a migration and then my comments on annotate will get out of date and this integration with rake uh, works out extremely well because now I never have to remember that I need to update those because they should always be up to date.